Hi, and welcome to On Console, the video blog about my journey to becoming a certified NASA flight controller. Hi again, Jenny here. So while last week covered the CDH architecture and hardware, this episode will cover the CDH software, which is segment two, module two of the flight controller training. So in software, time management is very, very important. So the primary CNC broadcasts out the time along with a message with a bunch of other basic health and status information. Now our sources for time on board are GPS, Russian time, and the internal clock on the CNC. Now the internal time on the primary CNC is kept synced up to GPS. In order to do that, we use what's called time metering. What time metering is, is us basically controlling the clock on the CNC. If it gets a little bit too far ahead of the GPS, we push it back and slow it down. If it gets too far behind GPS, then we have to push it forward and speed it up. We're basically redefining what a second is. Now, all the other MDMs do their own drift compensation, basically trying to keep their time as close as possible to the primary CNCs. But sometimes these two values get a little too far out of range. Well, for the computers anyway. This loss of sync happens at just 350 microseconds off. That's barely over a third of a millisecond. Now, when this happens, it's our responsibility to sync that MDM back up to the system. Because as long as an MDM is out of sync, you can't trust any data coming down from it, which also means we can't command to it. We also learned a lot more about executing data dumps and file transfers, which I've talked on before. But we also learned about how we can actually change the software on board. Now, some parts of the software were never meant to be changed and would require a patch if we wanted to do so. There are other parts, though, that were meant to be replaced often, and they have their own version IDs and checksum wildcards. So, what's a checksum? Well, a checksum is a calculation on the information that you're sending. It makes sure that the data that you receive at your destination is the same that left the origin. Now, a checksum wildcard is a random bit that makes sure the checksum is the same. That way you don't have to reprogram a whole new calculation every time you send something small. So this is how we make minor edits to the software. Now, as it is with most things to do with files and data, Cronus is responsible for managing this when someone wants to make that change. Now, the biggest thing with all of this is practice, practice, practice. We go through all of the motions associated with doing a software change, a data dump, a file transfer, and a lot of other actions. And we do these in FCPTT rooms, or Flight Controller Part Task Trainer rooms. In here, we have access to about all of our console tools, and we also get simulated ISS data, so we can actually send commands and see how our displays change. Now, in addition to practicing these, we also get to see how to respond to failures and what to look for. We all wait in anticipation when our mentor's around, trying to figure out what she'll break next. All right, overview looks good. Caution warning is good, no messages. I wonder what she's gonna throw in. It's been a while. Everything still looks good. I don't see any. Oh god. Oh god. Has that been there the whole time? Did she just do that? Oh, references. Re references. Procedures. Like <laughs> no, it doesn't. Doesn't make me nervous at all. What are you? <laughs> what are you? What are you talking about? So I got a question about the Russian MDMs and the U.S. MDMs and how they work together. Now that four box structure I mentioned in the last episode is to share some crucial information between each other and keep everyone aware of what's going on in the ISS. Apart from that though, the Russian segment, the US segment, and even the GEM module and the Columbus module all have different ways of structuring their computer systems and different ways of doing things, but it's the interfaces and how we keep each other aware that matters the most. That's all for this episode. Be sure to check out my other sites and pages and take a look at the first or previous episodes if you haven't already. Well, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next week and for many more, as we get one step closer to being on console. Thanks, and have a great week!